Sorry about that. I don't know why. Okay, Latin is an inflected language. That means the way you're going to know what job the word is doing in a sentence is by the endings. Okay, does that make sense? So these nouns are going to have certain endings on them, and that tells you their jobs. Okay, so the whole key, whether you've got a noun or a verb or whatever, is all in the endings. Okay, so a lot of times people will circle the endings or, you know, just underline them, whatever they need, because that tells you the job that the word is doing in the sentence. So, how many declensions are there? Five. 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 Okay, does anybody know what they're called? First, third, third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. That's what the declensions are called. Okay, today we're going to talk about first declension and second declension. Okay, now... How do you know what declension a word belongs to? Mariah. Ending. But, uh, which ending? The genitive. The genitive singular ending. So write that down. The way to tell what declension a noun belongs to is by its genitive singular ending. That, I'm right, right? Okay. Now, all first declension words... Their genitive singular ends in what two letters? A E. A E. Okay? So when you look at your book and you get ready to read it, you're going to have vocab. Okay? And we'll just use this as our model. Terra, this is the one we recited, one of the ones. Okay? Terra, terai. A lot of times they just, they don't write out the second one, they'll just give you the endings. Okay? All first declension words have A E <coughs> in their genitive singular. That's how you know you have a first declension word. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Now, the way you find a stem from a first declension word is you have terra, terai. Okay? You find your stem by dropping off the genitive singular ending. And that leaves you your stem. And it's easy in first declension as we go along. Some of the others aren't as easy to find out the stem. But if you learn this rule right now, to find the stem, drop off the genitive singular ending, then it will help you later on. Okay? So, now I'm going to erase this stuff, but leave the cases on. So we want to decline first declension, okay? So how many times would I write the stem down? Okay, ah, isn't that a good question? Five or ten? Why is it ten? Singular and plural, okay? Nouns have Gender, number, case, okay? So we're going to write down 10 times that stem. Okay, we're going to use the word terra. So let me write this down. Okay, we got singular. Let me get a roll. Okay, and plural. And we're going to put that stem down, uh, just the stem, 10 times. Reciting in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you remember when we came in? We tara, terai, terai, teram, tara, terai, teram, teris, teras, teris. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put the endings on a, i, i, um, a, i, arum, is, as, is. Okay, I don't typically just learn endings. Okay, I think it's better to relate it to a word, but, but as you learn them, you want to be able to recognize what the endings are. So we're putting them in green, okay? <coughs> so the first one is a. Uh. 
I, I, um, ah. Uh. Okay. So this one is uh, and this one is ah. Uh. Okay. What's the I difference between that? What's the difference between those two? Macron. The macron. The only way you'll know the difference between the nominative singular and the ablative singular is that macron. This one you say uh, like when we say a uh, cake, and this one is ah, uh, like father. Okay? So, okay? Then over here, I'm going with I, arum, is, os, is. Okay, so now let's recite it again together. Okay, ready? With your eyes now engaged to it. Tara, tarai, tarai, taram, tara. Tarai, tararam, taris, taras, taris. So I wanted you to maybe do that 25 times this week, you know. Just say that over and over again, trying to really learn that. Okay, now, how do we know if we have a subject in Latin? Okay, say it. Anyway. Okay, it will be in the nominative case. Whether it's singular or plural, the subject is always in the nominative case. Okay, that's, the, that's what the nominative case does. It's its job, it's the subject, okay? So you have the subject there. Okay, now what's the direct object case? Accusative. accusative. The direct object will always be in the accusative case. Okay, there's going to be other things in the accusative case too, but the direct object will always be in the accusative case, okay? And we're going to learn all these today, so that's why I'm sort of going over this real closely right now. What about our indirect object? It will always be in the dative case, if you have an indirect object. Now, a lot of times when you're first learning Latin, a big frustration is, in English, R2 is a preposition. Okay, and so people want to make to the girl in the ablative case. But in Latin, it will be like forever till you get the preposition to the river. Okay, so if you see to anything, you're putting it in the dative case right now for this whole, well, for all of challenge A. You'll never get to add. What? That is so helpful. Okay. I'm just saying, because I know it's so confusing and over and over again, but Mrs. Bradford, Two is a preposition, I know, and so is of. Isn't that a bummer? But in Latin, <laughs> of is the genitive case and not a preposition. So I'm just giving you that heads up right now. So you know two is going to be indirect object, okay? Dative case, okay? And then you got your preposition case. Okay, you guys got this? Can I erase it? Because I got more to tell you. Lots more. Hope I get through in my time. Okay. What did you just say about the other one? Four? You said two and then so is. Uh, two and oh, two and oh. Of is gen always the genitive case, except for one exception, which I'll probably get to today. There's just one exception to that of thing. Otherwise, if you see of, you just stick it in the genitive case and you can't get wrong. Okay. Now, I want to just tell you something. We're not going to learn verbs. Verbs come in lesson nine, okay, which we'll get to this summer. But right now, what you need to know is, and I'm just going to put up two examples here, okay? If your verb ends in T, it's singular, okay? If your verb ends in NT, it's plural, okay? The reason that's super important is because your verb and your subject have to agree. So if you have a singular subject, you have a singular verb. If you have a plural subject, you have a plural verb. Okay? And we'll get to more of that in a bit. Now, the other thing I want to tell you while I have these two verbs up here is that is a Latin sentence. Okay? This word is a Latin sentence. Okay? This word is a Latin sentence. If it ends in a T, it either means he, she, or it. 
If it ends in an NT plural, it means they. Okay? Now, who knows what the word oro means? Pray. Okay, so he, she, or it prays, or they pray. Okay, and so there, when you get your vocab, this is how they're going to give you your verbs right now. They're either going to end in T or NT. Okay, and so you know that means he, she, or it prays, or they pray. Okay, and it's its own sentence. So when you're going along doing your exercises and they say, <coughs> translate that. Who's doing it? First, you say to yourself, who's doing it? They. they. Okay, you just look right there. You know they. And does anybody know what laudo means? Praise. Praise. Okay, they praise. Okay, there's your sentence. Okay, now, what if we want to put a subject, a separate subject that is not in the verb? Okay, what case am I going to put the subject in? Nominative. You guys got that, right? Okay, so I'm going to put a subject in the nominative case. So let's say, we'll, we'll stick with this word praise. Okay, if I want to say um, the sailor praises. Okay, what's your subject? Sailor. sailor. What's your verb? Praises. Praises. Now, is this singular or plural? Singular. Right? There's only one sailor, so this has to be singular. Okay, and I'm going to tell you how to deal with verbs a little bit later, how we're going to parse them. Okay, so what case does sailor need to be in? Nominative. Nominative. Does anybody know the word for sailor? Nautica. Okay, okay, we just want one, so it's nauta. Okay. And who remembers the word for praises? Lao Okay, Lao Do, but we got something. Lao Dot. Okay, because remember, that if it ends in T, it's the he, she, or it. Okay? So, remember? Uh, I, I, um, ah. Uh. So that's why we have this A here. Subject, verb. What if we wanted to make this plural? Okay? Right? What, what do I need to change? If you put an E on the, A-E on the nautai, and you make it N-T on the dot. Okay, got that? So instead of nominative singular, I just have to put the nominative plural ending on. So instead of the single A, I'm going to do, that was our nominative plural ending, now tie, and I can't have a singular verb, right? So I have to have a plural verb. That makes sense? Okay, this one is the sailor praises, the sailors praise. Okay? Um, okay. Let's add a direct object to this. Now, who remembers what case a direct object? Accusative. 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 So I accuse you directly. That's right. Oh, okay. I accuse you directly. <laughs> Direct object accusative. Excellent. I learn new things all the time. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it's got to, and in first declension, what's the endings for accusative? Say it loud. Am um, or us, right? So, what would, now, who knows where verbs go normally in Latin? In the, end. the end. The end. The end. Okay, so you sort of always look at the end for your verbs. So we're going to move this verb so we can stick a direct object in there. What, what do we want the sailor to praise? God. God. Oh, yeah, but we don't have that word in first declension. We've got to think of a first declension word. Mary. That Mary. Okay, so the sailors can praise Mary. Okay, so what's the word for Mary. Mary, and then we always learn the genitive. Mary, Mary, I. Okay. So what will it be in the accusative case? Mary, right? Okay. So the sailor praises Mary. Now, what if we want the sailor to pra praise all Marys he ever knew? What am I going to do? Mary, us. See, so we just change the accusative singular 
to accusative plural. Okay, see how that works? Now, what if we want lots of sailors to praise Mary? But they're just going to praise one Mary. What should we do? Mary on. Mary on. Okay. Okay. And then what do I do if I want to have them just praise lots, all the Marys they know? Okay. So each one of these words <coughs> stands by itself. Whether you have a singular sailor, a singular or plural Mary. Okay. But remember, the subject agrees with the verb. So if you have a singular subject, singular verb, plural subject, plural verb, okay? So far so good. Any questions before I keep moving on? Okay. Um, what if I want to say, um, I better come up, I better not pull this off my, because I can't, um, oh, okay. The sailor praises let me erase this. The glory of Mary. Okay, so I'm going to write it down first. So there's something we, we can do that's called, um, let me write it down. The sailor praises the glory of Mary. Okay, we can label this. Okay, and sometimes it's really helpful to label the sentence in English before we ever begin to translate it, okay? So let's do that. We always start with the verb. So what's the verb in this case? Praise. 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 Okay, so I always <coughs> underline the verb, and right now I'm just going to write, we don't know how to parse them, so I'm just going to write verb on it. So what's the subject? Sailor. 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 Okay. What is the direct object? Glory. Okay, right, glory. Then what case is of Mary going to be in? I got some different things, okay? What did we say in Latin, of case always is? Genitive. I know, I know, just get it out now. <clears throat> It's not fair. You know, especially if you've been teaching essentials, that yeah, of is a preposition. I know, but of and to in Latin, you've got to put it away. It's not going to be the object of the preposition That's right now. I got so lost all the time. Okay? It, you are just going to know that of is always the genitive case. Okay? This is really going to help you to figure that out. Okay? Two or four, instead of being prepositions, they're just going to be in the dative case. Okay? So this is going to be in the genitive case. Okay? So what I want you to do, see if you can translate this sentence on your paper. Okay? You know the endings. Okay? See what you come up with, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go over it together. Anybody want to do it on the board? You, you, you have to want to be wrong. You know, I'm not always right. Okay? Yeah. You're welcome to come up. As long as you don't mind being wrong. Okay? What? He might not know glory. I'll tell, you the, I'll tell you the Latin word for it. Come on, Patrick. Okay, Patrick's going to do it first. He'll be our guinea pig. Use a black. Here, use a black. Okay? All right. I want you to get it right. Okay. Just this time, get it right. Get it right. But one of the things, tutors, I, you learn more when, when kids make mistakes than when they do it right. You know, so, and kids, don't be afraid to make mistakes, because you really do learn more when you make mistakes, and then you work it out together, and you figure, why isn't this right? Okay, so don't be afraid of that. Does he think I can reach up there to correct his mistakes? <laughs> here, put it under here, Patrick. <laughs> if I keep going and you have to leave because I need to get through so much material, just slip out. I don't know. Okay. What's the word for glory? Oh, the word for glory is Gloria, Gloriae. Let's clap that there's one word that looks the same in English and Latin. <laughs> you know? Oh, another one, Victoria, Victoriae. Guess what that means? Victory. I love it. There's going to be lots of them, actually. But every time we get one, we just cheer because it makes our life so easy. Okay, while he's doing that, how do we know what declension a word belongs to? 
by its genitive singular. How do we find the stem? Exactly. Take the genitive singular ending up. Okay. Okay, let's see. You guys look at it and tell him if he's right or not. Okay, he has Nauta Gloria Maria Laudat. No. I think I have Gloria. 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 Okay, what should, okay, see, this is awesome. Okay, so what's his subject? Nauta. Nauta. And he has that in the nominative case, right? What's his verb? Okay, and is it singular to match his singular? Yes. Yep, so that's good. What's his direct object? Glory. Glory, right? We labeled him. So does he have an accusative ending on it? So he's right, okay? Glory on is his direct object, so it has to be in the accusative case. And then of Mary has to be in what case? No, it's always in the it's always in the genitive case. Okay. Um, so, is Mariai in the genitive case? Is that the right endings? Okay, so he got that right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Me. The order. Well, I'm going to tell you this now. It doesn't matter. So when you guys are correcting your students' papers or your child's, okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, it really doesn't. Now, I'm going to give you some guidelines, okay, for you to, to help you, but it, there is just, it's everywhere, and it will mix up, and just when you think you have the order down, they're going to change it on you. So I just don't want you to ever get comfortable with any kind of Latin order, okay? The genitive usually follows the word it modifies. So glory of Mary, okay, is usually right after the word it modifies, okay? It usually right now goes subject, direct object, <coughs> verb, okay? Are they going to put subject in other places in the sentence besides first, Patrick? Yeah. That subject, maybe 50% of the time is going to be the first word, students. You can't depend on the subject being the first word in the sentence. How can you know if you have a subject? Ending. By the endings. Okay, that's the only way. And even then, you know, it's still a bit of a guessing game because if you look at your endings for first declension, how many times did you have the ending A-E? Three times. So you, you try something, okay? And does that make sense? And if it makes sense and it, the, the students got it right, I marked it right, even if the answer book says something wrong, something different. Okay, if it can be right, it's right. Okay, does that make sense? Because, you know, those words can be anywhere and sometimes there's more, there's three things, three endings that are the same. So, so you know, just keep that in mind. I have a question. Okay, yes. You said of is always in the genitive. And so that's why I put glory I instead of glory on. Well, <coughs> but glory is the direct object. You see, that, so direct object would be huge. Right. So, okay. Gloria. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. So that's why, you know, Henley's not going to tell you to label these, but I think it's really helpful. Okay. When you're learning it, and you and the students are learning it, and you're learning it yourself, if you label it, let's face it, we don't even know our English that well, you know, and so this will even help us with our English. Although this group knows English better than 90% of the other people in this country. Okay, thanks to essentials. Okay, but, but still it really will solidify our English as we label it. And as we learn to parse our verbs, I can't even overemphasize the importance of that. Okay, so you guys good with this? Okay, all right. So what I want to do now is talk about second declension. Okay, so write your cases down. Write your five cases down. Next to your five cases, write the jobs. Okay, just as sort of a reminder, write the cases, write the jobs. Anybody want to do it on the board? Okay. Okay, this is just what we do just for practice. You know, you write those cases in order. 
Um, remind me of your name? Levi. Levi. Okay, Levi's going to do it. Can you do it in black? Thanks, Levi. All the way. Yeah, I need to do it. Come all the way over here. Okay, as he's writing that down and you're writing it down, your five cases, I want to tell you something about first declension. Most of the words in first declension are feminine. Okay? So that's just something for you to... Every word, every noun has number, case, and gender. Number means it's singular or plural. These are the cases. It's either going to be nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, or ablative. And Latin has three genders. Does anybody know what the three genders are that Latin nouns have? Masculine, feminine, and neuter. Okay? Every Latin word is going to have one of those genders. Okay? Now, in English, it's sort of easy for us. If you're a boy, you're masculine. If you're a girl, you're feminine. And what's a table? It. Neuter. 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 But that's not true in Latin. Okay? It is true that masculine and feminine beings are masculine or feminine. And we call that the supreme rule. Okay? Supreme gender rule. Natural gender rule. Okay? So if it names a masculine or feminine being, it is masculine or feminine. Okay? <coughs> then we have to learn the gender of every other noun. Okay? But almost all first declension nouns are feminine. Okay? So you can keep that in mind. Oh, he's given us everything. See that? Okay. So thank you, Levi. Okay. So Levi has us nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. And he put on some second declension endings for us. Now, how do we know a word belongs to the second declension? Oh, you guys got it. Genitive singular. So our model that we will have for Henley is this word. Sir was, sir we. Okay? And I'm going to write it out. Uh, sir was, sir we. Because how do I find the stem? I'm going to take off the genitive ending, and there's my stem. Okay? Sir. Okay, got it? That's how you find the stem. Now, he already gave us the ending. So let's say our, our second declension. Now, I do have to say something. This is second declension masculine endings. Okay? So it's us, e, o, um, o, e, orum, east, coast. East. Again, us, e, o, um, o, e, orum, east, os, east. One more time. Us, e, o, um, o, e, orum, east, os, east. So how am I going to decline sir was? Can I, is, yes. Is that a macro on the e, <coughs> the genitive singular? It is. But you didn't write one, but not on Sir V? When you wrote Sir V? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't deal with backgrounds. Oh, okay. All the, I, I just don't, I don't take time to do. That's going to be your choice as a tutor, okay. whether to deal with macrons or not, okay? Um, but all, not, they're not in the original language. language, and so eventually you're not going to be able to use them anyway, so I just, for the most part, I don't deal with them. Okay. okay it takes a lot, a lot of time to, to, to master that for every word. But it's your choice. Okay, so, but how am I going to decline this word? Okay, I go, and I got to get this right. So, sir was, sir we, sir wo, sir wom, sir wo, sir we, sir warum, sir wees, sir wos, sir wees. Okay, so you want to write that down? Go ahead and decline it on your paper. Anybody want, someone who hasn't come up to the board want to do it on the board? while they're writing that. Um, okay. As an ex-foundations teacher, maybe, again, I pronounced them differently than you pronounced them. Is that a big deal? Because we had a song that I got off the file. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that song is wrong. wrong. Yeah. Really? That yeah. song is said Sir Why, and it's Sir We. Well, I didn't hear that. It was Us, E-O-M-O. -O. Oh, e Us. Or east, Os, East. Um, yeah. Well, when we get to fourth declension, that's Us. So, I mean. Okay, so Us. It, it, okay. Us, e. Yeah. So the macrons only really matter in the pronunciation of the words. It does. But not it does. But, but 
Because it's not a language that we all speak, it's very hard to get uniform in it, uniformity, uniformity with it. Okay? So, and I know that's one of the hardest things to deal with. You know, even if we in this room got it all the same and chose the pronunciation we're going to use, then there's still all these people out there that aren't, you know, because it's not spoken. So it's. Um, so, but I'm just asking as a foundation student, would it matter how you pronounce it? No. Kids are really flexible. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and you know, there's, <laughs> there's two, and, and there's also two different pronunciations for Latin anyway. There's classical and ecclesiastical. Right. So. Yeah, but a lot of the songs are just wrong. <laughs> yeah, and that is true. Really? Yeah. It is true. I yeah. Get your number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that is a little frustrating. So, did anybody already do declines for us? Okay, but nobody came up on the board. You want? I better write it. Okay. Sarah was, Sarah we, so you can check. Sarah will, Sarah won, Sarah will, Sarah we, Sarah won, Sarah we, Sarah was, Sarah we. Okay. Good enough? Okay. Um. Now, what did I write on the top of that? Masculine. Masculine. Okay. And that's because why, Levi? There is a second declension neuter. There is a second declension neuter. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave this on here because so, I want to just show you. It's very similar. Okay. So, it's only different in a couple of places. I wonder if this, this is backwards. Yes. I did not write this on my notes. But when we were doing the singular and plural of the first sequence, not feminine. That's feminine. Okay. Yes. And I'm just not going to tell you the exceptions right now. Okay. So the difference is going in green between masculine and neuter. So we're putting neuter endings in green. Instead of us, it's going to be um. That's the only singular difference. So it'll be um, e, o, um, o. And then in the plural... It's just ah uh, in the nominative and accusative plural. Now, I'm going to tell you two rules, and that will help you to remember how to sort this neuter thing out, okay? The first rule is neuter nouns, no matter what declension, are always the same in the nominative and accusative, okay? So that's rule number one. Neuter nouns are always the same in the nominative and accusative, okay? The second rule, if you remember this rule, it will help you so much. Neuter nouns always end in A in the nominative and accusative plural, okay? Neuter nouns always end in the letter A in nominative and accusative plural. Okay? And our neuter model is Bella. And guess what the genitive of bellum is? Belly. Why is the neuter? Why is the genitive singular of bellum belly? Because it's second declension. And remember, all second declension words have I in their genitive singular. Okay, that's what makes it a second declension noun. So it's bellum. Belly. Okay? So, and, so what's the difference between Sir Was, Sir We, and Bella and Belly? Both the same. Okay, so they both are what declension? Second. And how do you know they're both second declension? Singular, Singular lens ends in the letter I. <laughs> now, what's the difference between these two? The S and the M. Masculine, neuter. Okay, so if the 
nominative singular ends in us, it's masculine. If the nominative singular ends in um, it's neuter. Pretty easy? Okay. I didn't decline vellum, and I'm not going to take time, but it's for sure in your grammar book. And as you do your Henley lesson, it's going to tell you to look at your grammar book, and it's going to ask you to decline neuter nouns. Um, but before we go, I want, I'm going to put a set. We can't go yet. Oh, I'm not too far behind yet. Because I have to do a couple more things. Okay. So I'm going to write a sentence down. And, and I want you to look at it. Now you might not, some of you will know these words and others of you won't. we're going to do with this sentence? Oh, it's just a bunch of words up there, right? Find the Let's find the verb. Okay, so what's the verb? Laudant, right? So we're going to underline the verb. Is it singular or plural? Okay, plural. So that, I'm going to circle this NT. That tells us we're looking for a plural noun, a plural subject. Okay, so Look at your second declension forms. Us, e, o, um, o, e, orum, is, o, cis. Okay? What, what could be the subject? Actually, every single one of those words could be the subject. Because, oh, Robin, can you just close the door? Thanks. Um, um, because... Regnum is a neuter noun, okay? I'm really glad I picked this sentence, okay, to show you. Any one of those, right, could be the subject, okay? But like all good English-speaking people, what would you choose as your subject? Um, let's go with that, okay? So we'll just try that. Okay, now... What, what, if that's your subject and that's your verb, what's your direct object? This is how I do things. I look for verb, then subject, and then we have, if it's our direct object, what case does it have to be in? Accusative. Accusative. Only one of those words has an accusative case ending. Regnum. Regnum, right? So what am I going to write over that? Hey. Dia. Hey. Okay. So what could these other things be? Object, well, let's, the only way to know is to do what? Look at the endings. Oh, could they be genitives? Because we don't have any conjunctions, so we can't have more than one subject, right? That's it. So let's make this a genitive. If that's in the genitive case, let's make this in the genitive. And see what happens. Okay, so let's now we have all these words. How are we going to translate this? Like, what what should be our like game plan? Subject, Subject. genitive, verb, direct object, genitive. Okay, okay. So subject, genitive, they go together. Verb. Let's take the genitives out for a second. Okay. Let's just box those and pretend like they don't exist. Then how are we going to do it? Subject, verb, direct object. S V T D O. Okay, you guys got that? Okay, so let's just do that. Who knows what this word means? Friends. The friends, remember, because this is plural. The friends. Praise. praise. And I know you, you don't all know these words. What do they praise? The kingdom. Okay? The friends praise the kingdom. Okay? Really, that's what we do. So we got our basic sentence. But now we want to add those genitives in. And remember what I said? They usually follow the word they modify. So the friends of God of Christ. Okay? It's, here's the deal. 
And if, I, if you just remember one thing today, remember this. It's not a guessing game. Okay, those endings mean something. Okay, they really do. So you know that this can't be an indirect object because it's not Deo. Okay, if it was an indirect object, it would be in the dated case. Okay, so it's sort of like a puzzle that you're going to work out. <coughs> yes, we had three. If your students had said the gods, the gods of the friends, of the friend, praise the Christ. No, that wouldn't work. Praise the kingdom of Christ. Could they say that the gods of the friend praise the kingdom of Christ? Would that be right? Yes. Okay. Because why couldn't that be the nominative plural subject? It can be, okay? Because it's in the nominative plural as well as the genitive singular, okay? So, but let's for now decide, for the most part, our subjects first, okay? That'll hold for about two weeks, okay? <laughs> but it'll hold you this week, okay? Um, one of the other things you're going to learn as you read the lesson is indirect objects. Okay, what case are the indirect objects going to be in? Dative. Dative. How are you going to translate those? Two. two. Okay, so you're going to translate it two. Okay, um, he gave a cookie to the king. Okay, so it will be in the dative case. Okay. Is this like English where there's, if there's a D-O, there's a D-O? I'm sorry, what? Is this like English if there's an I-O, is there always a D-O in the sentence? Yes. I think so. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Gosh, that's a great question. Um, and then you're also going to get prepositions, okay? Now, when they introduce a preposition in the vocab, what they're going to do is they're going to do something like this. Um, let me think of one you're going to get. Oh, this is one. Okay. Okay, so they're going to say kum with the ablative. Okay? That doesn't, this preposition never changes how it looks like. Prepositions always look the same. They don't decline, they don't conjugate. Yay. Okay? So when you learn a preposition, it never changes its form. Okay? When it says with the ablative, that means the object of the preposition is in that place, in that case. So if we have um, with the land, okay? With the land is going to be kum, ablative case, terra, okay? If we have with the lands, still kum, but instead of ablative singular, what do I need? Ablative. Anybody know the ablative plural ending? Teres. Yeah? There you go. Cum terra, cum teres. Okay? So, and you'll have, I think you're going to get two in the accusative case. So, isn't this silly? We learn this thing, non-regenerative, and we say, oh, what is the ablative case? It's a preposition case, right? But this week you're going to get two prepositions in the accusative case. Okay? Because prepositions are either in the ablative case or the accusative case. Okay? You got a question? Okay. So these are the four you're going to get. In, I'm going to write them in order. Those are your ablatives for today. And then you're going to have propter and you're going to have post. Okay, and those are going to be your two that will take. Now remember, the objects of the prepositions will be in that case. These will always look like this. Hallelujah. Okay, now I'm going to give you a little beware. We call that in Latin caveat. Okay, a little beware. Okay, who knows what, how to translate prop terror? That's probably an alarm saying she should be done by now. <laughs> Yes, say it louder. On account of. On account of. What word does that end with? Uh, of. This is the one exception. And they give it to you right away, so you might as well learn it. On account of ends in the word of. It, it does not take the genitive case. 
prompter takes the accusative case, but it does end in the word of. Sort of a bummer. But, so just try to keep that a little bit straight this week as you're going. Okay? Um, I want you to know that you can text me or call me or email me at any time as you are going along with your Latin studies. Do I mean that? I really mean that. I am available to you. I don't need my book to answer your questions for the most part. I can just answer them right away. So please feel free to ask me any questions. <coughs> What's going to happen is you're going to correct. I've ordered 10 really good answer keys, okay? The answer key that comes with this <coughs> is terrible. Amen. So I've ordered 10. That's the one I've ordered, okay? So if you haven't already bought this, they're going to be $6 each. Okay, $5. Is that the, is that the, uh, the Seton. The Seton one? Yes. So if you have it, great. But I just didn't want your frustrations to rise when you got to Henley and it says, check your grammar book. <laughs> and it's like, oh, how unhelpful is that? C number three. Yeah, C number three. Exactly. So this is fantastic. And I will, I don't know, I think it'll be here by next, next week. So I'll be able to give those to you if you want one. Um, email list. What? Email list. Oh, yeah, the email list. If you didn't get to put your name on the email list, I know I've talked to all of you, but I'd like it all in one place. If you didn't get, I'm not going to give you guys this yet. I will later. Um, did everybody get one of these? Gosh, this looks like my last one. I think I made it Oh, okay. I was like, wow. Okay, students, don't just let your mom have one because this is your homework, okay? So that you read the lessons and you do the... Now, if you are going into Challenge A, that this is not for you, okay? <laughs> you are welcome to sit in here and just imbibe, but do not do any exercises. Just get whatever you can out of it, okay? I do not want you to be overwhelmed. when you. I go so much faster than Challenge A does because I'm doing this for the tutors, <laughs> Okay, I'm not doing it per se for the students, okay, but for people who need to learn it or for the moms who want to be ahead of you, okay? But if you are going into Challenge B or Challenge 1, especially if you're going into Challenge 1, do your work, okay, an hour a day. Learn your vocab, learn your forms. Um, anyway, let me...